Today we'll take a look at how we can integrate Atomos Shogun Studios with Skyhoy controllers. So an Atomos Shogun Studio is uh, this device. It is a recording deck with two hard disk recorders in, three unit and um, touch screen based. So it's a pretty nice device and it's hooked up with a Skyhoy XC2 right here. So um, we can see that we have some sources coming into it. If I press the record button, both decks are gonna start recording. So I have gang recording hooked up with the XC2. And uh, obviously if I press the stop button, it's gonna stop again. Great. Then we have a go to play mode button. So um, the Shogun Studio works in a way that it, it has either play mode or a recording mode. So now I went to play mode and uh, it starts playing back as we would expect. Um, it will also uh, disconnect for a short while. That's a nature of the Shogun Studio, but then it, it comes back with information in the displays about what these buttons do. So again, I can press the play button. We'll see it's, it's playing back gang playback, essentially. So it's doing it on both devices. I have a loop option. So you can see the small loop icon here is uh, enabled. And then as I, uh, I can also disable it again. So it's a toggle button. So it's now gonna play back over and over again. Then we have a uh, rewind. So I can go by uh, times two speed backwards or times four speed backwards. It's also a kind of toggle button. So now it's, it's uh, rewinding with four times speed and the same we have fast forward and uh, fast forward two times, four times, eight times and 16 times are supported in the protocol as well. So that's available inside the configuration too. And now there's also a really awesome fact about this and that is the XC2 is connected not only to the Shogun Studio but to an ATEM switcher. So actually these features are enabled by a button that I assigned to this and that would be this one which is uh, it says fade to black but today I have assigned it to be a state indicator. So as I press this button you see that um, the the buttons over here they change now to labels from the ATEM switcher. So I can select the preview and the program row and I can operate the T by use the cut button if I want and so forth, which is really cool. So what I want to do right now is to take a look at the configuration of the XC2 and how I'm communicating with the Shogun Studio. And um, we have the configuration right here. You see that I have two Shogun Studio device cores installed. And then I also have an ATEM switcher device core installed. That's of minor interest in this video though. So let's look at how the Shogun Studio device cores are used. Well, um, first of all, and then let's look at this drawing. You see that the button that says Shogun will bring the controller into Shogun state. And then in that state, all the commands on the uh, left eight keys will be routed to the Shogun Studios. So let's see how that works. If I uh, click this um, interface component, the configuration shows up here and you can see that it's it's toggling state number one, okay? So then if I select the play button and I hold down the shift key to select record and stop and loop, you see now the configuration for uh, those keys too. And um, for the play button, you can see, and you should focus your interest on this column over here that says Shogun because that's what the button will do when it is in the Shogun state. That's how state works. You put a controller into a given state and then everything in that column in the configuration will uh, be the actions that are, are triggered by the particular button or knob or whatever. So you see the first, the play button will play back Atomos Shogun Studio number one and number two. When you press stop, it's the same. Number one and number two each receives a command to stop and Shogun one and two will receive a record. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the principle is that for the button, we just set up two actions. So both sides of the recording deck will receive a, an action to start, stop and record. The same goes for looping, obviously. We have very nice features like you can toggle, you can hold down um, for play, stop and, uh, well, not stop, obviously, but play and record, you can do that. And also for uh, the, the loop function, you can, uh, toggle it on and off like we just saw we could do. Why would you ever want to hold a button to record or play? Well, you, you, you won't assign that to a button most likely, but you might want to assign it to a, a switch. If that was connected to one of our GPI modules, then, that it, then, it, then it makes sense. All right. 
So this is why the feature is there, because the interface is universal. Now, I just uh, highlight the other buttons for the fast forward and so forth. And in this case, I've only set it up for the one side of the deck. So if you want it to for the other side, probably you want to have a modifier key so you could change between the two and then uh, route um, forwarding and rewinding to that particular deck, since it wouldn't make that much sense to do it on both decks at the same time. So that's the configuration. And if you looked at the left side of the configuration, you can see that in that column, you have all the actions that would make it communicate with an ATEM switcher. So it shows how wonderfully flexible the Skyhoy panels can be. And that goes for any Skyhoy controller that you can uh, use states and shift levels to change functionality of keys. And you saw how awesome the displays would change. You can see it again here as I go between these two states. You see how the displays will update immediately. So you're never in doubt what any key does. And that's um, one really powerful argument why these controllers are truly universal in their nature.